This video is brought to you by Incogni. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. Recently, though it has been slowly increasing over the past couple of years, you seemingly can't go 15 seconds without having AI shoved in your face by some sort of commercial enterprise. You have Coca-Cola now using AI imagery for their advertising campaigns. You have Google working Gemini into practically every single product that they offer. But no matter what company it happens to be, there's a very clear atmosphere. It kind of feels almost desperate when you see it in real time. They want you to accept it, use it, even admire it. But that's the consumer side of artificial intelligence. It's the end user products that they want you to engage with, which turns out to be a tiny fraction of the overall market, completely overshadowed in the background by industrial applications. AI is now the basis for pretty much every single social media platform, from TikTok to YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. But today we're talking about Instagram in particular. We're talking about a problem where the human component of Instagram is being supplanted by thousands upon thousands of AI constructed profiles, which many people have no idea even exist. It's a complicated problem, one which has roots across multiple social media networks, but to break it all down, I want to start with this. According to research posted in the European Data Journalism Network with findings and methodology that are available in a public document, Instagram disproportionately amplifies photos and videos that show excessive amounts of bare skin. Anecdotally, a lot of people consider Instagram to be largely dominated by what's called thirst traps, a term which is funnily enough now recognized by Miriam Webster, and means, quote, a photograph such as a selfie or video shared for the purpose of attracting attention or desire, end quote. Thirst traps are typically women, though plenty of male influencers also participate in this behavior, to be clear, who post pictures of themselves with limited or revealing clothing in a suggestive way, thereby subverting the terms of service and attracting attention from their audience. It's not new, and it's not uncommon, but what many people don't know is that it very well may be hard-coded right into the promotion algorithm of the platform. According to the research I previously mentioned, quote, posts that contained pictures of women in undergarments or bikini were 54% more likely to appear in the newsfeed of our volunteers. Posts containing pictures of bare-chested men were 28% more likely to be shown. By contrast, posts showing pictures of food or landscape were about 60% less likely to be shown in the newsfeed, end quote. Disclosing limitations here, the study is far from definitive on the subject. It analyzed roughly 1,700 posts containing 2,400 pictures and regularly scanned the feed for a couple dozen volunteers to determine what they were seeing and how prevalent. Obviously, I'd like to see tens of thousands of profiles analyzed to get a much more comprehensive look at the reality of the algorithm. But taking the study at face value, it paints a very skewed picture of what content is typically promoted, and seems to corroborate what a lot of people already firmly believe about the platform, which is posting revealing pictures in skimpy clothing is the fastest way to get increased viewership. It's really not so hard to believe. Sex sells, as they say, and it's been that way since the dawn of humanity, but going a step further, there's actually a patent held by Meta Platforms Incorporated, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, which outlines, quote, methods, apparatuses, and systems directed to calculating a probability that a user or set of users will engage with a multimedia object for customizing content in a social networking system, end quote, aka a patent for how they algorithmically determine what will be the most popular. Well, inside that patent is a very interesting section, which goes like this, quote, in particular embodiments, API may estimate the state of undress of the people in photo by detecting large swaths of a set of common colors, such as identified skin tones. This disclosure contemplates any suitable method of feature extraction through application of computer vision algorithms." End quote. In simplified terms, the patent that they hold for determining the popularity of visual content directly considers how much clothing the person is wearing, scanning for large swaths of common colors, such as identified skin tones. It's far from definitive, but consider the prevailing atmosphere of Instagram as a platform. Certainly not every single user encounters a feed dominated by partially undressed influencers, but enough people do to where studies are coming back with significantly skewed results, and the common impression of the platform is that it heavily promotes or incentivizes that type of content. So why does it matter? Well, if we accept that the platform is dominated by this type of content now, and if we also accept that machine learning algorithms are the reason why it's happening to begin with, what if we add a new layer? What if we introduce a system where publicly available AI tools allow users to mass produce this kind of content from a single laptop, thereby overrunning Instagram's feed entirely and platform, 
with often indistinguishably altered reels stolen from actual people with transposed artificially generated faces on them. What then? Well, obviously we don't have to wonder what then because it is happening. That's the purpose of the video. And today I wanna to show you why it's happening, partially how it's happening and how bad the problem really is. Whether or not people agree on the severity of that problem or the scale of how detrimental it can become eventually is another story. But hopefully when I'm finished, people will begin to realize that the human component of the online world, in this case, Instagram, right? As the first example is being drowned out. Before going further, today's video is made possible by Incogni, which is an online privacy and data protection service. Privacy and data protection being topics that I think are holistically underappreciated and woefully underprioritized in the modern digital world. Everybody wants your data. It's worth money. They train machine learning models on it, and you are the victim of whatever they decide to do because it's your data, your information, with an entire online economy built for it that operates independent from your knowledge or input. The tangible results of this, by the way, are things like spam phone calls, emails, junk mail, text messages, you name it. And once the cycle gets going, it basically never stops. Personal information is everywhere, not just in the archives of companies you know about or gave permission to, but other data firms as well who then trade it all across the internet. For everyday users, it's essentially impossible to take action, any action at all, because there are hundreds of these data brokers with a deliberately complex framework to try and contact them, fight objections, or get anything removed. However, Incogni does all of that for you quickly and easily. I've used it myself, I paid for the service, and I'm confident endorsing them. The process is relatively simple. Sign up for the website, give them legal permission to work on your behalf, and let them know what information they'll be having removed, and then just let them work. That's it. Aggregating the service helps them streamline the process, and once it gets going, you'll see results pretty much immediately, which means less spam, less junk mail, and less people selling your information online. Using the link down below in the description and code Echelon at checkout, you'll get 60% off an annual subscription to Incogni. Again, link down below in the description and promo code Echelon at checkout for 60% off your subscription. Big thank you to Incogni for sponsoring the channel. All right, back on task. To properly explain how it all works, I wanna break things down into two categories, first generation AI influencers and then second generation AI influencers. A great example of the first generation in this case would be Aitana Lopez. For anyone curious, Aitana Lopez is an AI influencer created by a modeling agency who now has hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and earns, as of November last year, over $16,000 per month. If you scroll its feed, I almost called it her a couple of times in the video script, but I made sure to correct that issue, obviously. If you scroll its feed, you'll see it primarily consists of AI-generated imagery, sometimes blended with real photos, taken for the purpose of promoting its brand. Here's what I'm talking about. This is obviously a real photograph. AI is not yet capable of imitating complex logical sequences inside an image. That is to say the rows of chairs and the numbers that they have sequentially making sense. Just it's not a step that the generative AI imaging models can currently achieve without either significant human editing or some sort of real photo basis. So we can confidently assume this is a legitimate baseline photograph that they took for the purpose of placing Aitana inside it. However, that kind of customized photographic foundation is being used by a legitimate modeling agency who operates the Aitana profile as a media stunt. What happens when everyday people realize that they can create an entire digital persona and thirst trap on Instagram with it, which is the most popular way of creating content with the fastest through line to growth? What then? Well, that's where we get to what I call second generation AI influencers. And this is where things get illegal, highly unethical and predatory. Here's an example of a second generation AI influencer called I'm Alice with over a million followers. It's a good thing that the profile still discloses that it is powered by AI in its bio, surprising actually, but if you scroll the feed of posts, you immediately find a high number of video reels. However, if you look at those reels, some of them are constructed better than others, something almost immediately feels off. It's an uncanny valley type situation, which is the phenomenon where as something gets closer and closer to a human likeness, we gain affinity for it up to a point where suddenly we become disgusted or repulsed by it. It's a strange thing really, and very, very interesting. But basically if a sculpture or a video or a robot or whatever is close to a human likeness, but not quite there, we feel an overwhelming sense of unease when looking at it. And that is precisely the feeling that some of these Instagram reels will begin to elicit from discerning viewers. Well, the reason for that is because this video has been altered with an AI program to swap out the woman's face. The original video is from a human influencer named Rachel Pizzolatto, who has about 800,000 followers on Instagram, give or take, but it's been flipped on its horizontal axis with an altered face and reposted now by Alice. This is an example of second generation AI influencer behavior, 
but it's really just a window into the wider landscape of what's happening right now at scale all over Instagram. Let's build out the spider web. This post, the facially swapped video of Rachel Pizzolatto, tags another account, Dream Alice Shaw, which has 100,000 followers. If we go to that profile, we find a bunch of extremely similar images and also reels like this one. This is quite clearly an actual human female. AI programs can't quite get this close to reality just yet. They have this wonky visual sense to them. But if you go frame by frame, you can actually see the moment where the program kicks in and swaps out her face. For this one, I couldn't find the original video to show them side by side, but it's out there somewhere. That's two different profiles collectively holding over a million followers, but in the grand scheme of Instagram, that's a drop in the bucket, not even. Except if you start taking the reels that this one second generation AI influencer is constantly posting, grabbing snapshots of them, and throwing them up on Google with a reverse imaging search, you start to find dozens of additional profiles promoting these same AI fakes. Here's one posted by Alice, which is stolen from some unknown real model, which returns about a dozen additional profiles, such as this one, Sweet Sophia, posting a nonstop feed of stolen, facially swapped material with 28,000 followers. And before anyone says something here, some of these followers are certainly fake, yes, or purchased, but there's a hefty amount of very real engagement on these profiles with people completely unaware of what's happening. This is populated by real people interacting with this profile as if it's genuine. Here's another one. Same altered video from an account called Your Bow Ideal with 27,000 followers and the list goes on. Here's one with a woman dancing, stolen, altered, and reposted by Alice, reposted by another account called Isabella Boney this time, 50,000 followers, where the original has been taken from an account called Rave Girls Official, flipped on its horizontal axis, and face swapped with AI. This is just one network with hundreds of posts and collectively millions of followers, but it's one network of many. And now we have to ask the question, why? Why is this happening? Short answer, obviously profit. These profiles make money. People direct message them constantly. And those people messaging, thinking it's a real person, can easily become victims of Shazu Pan, which means the pig butchering, referring to a now industrialized practice, making its way through the West right now, of romance scamming. And they can even get brand deals or sponsorships with very little actual effort involved. But the bigger reason why it's happening is because it's currently allowed to happen. Let me take a step back right now. This right here is a video publicly available on YouTube with over 400,000 views right now, as I make this, that's been reported numerous times by tons of different people directly outlining precisely how to make one of these profiles and more insidiously directly telling people to go download the reels and video profiles for actual human women who resemble the AI model that they have constructed a face for then showcasing step-by-step step how to swap that face onto the body of these real women and use their content for second generation AI influencer profiles. For starters, that is very obvious copyright infringement, making no mention of the ethical problems, the numerous ethical problems involved. And yet YouTube has allowed this video to persist unimpeded since September of 2023, amassing close to half a million views. And it's not the only one. People are watching this, emulating this, and further degrading the world of social media by stealing content from real human beings across the web, altering their faces, and then spamming that content out again with 10 or even 20 times more viewership than it received in the first place. Of course, I know what some people are thinking. Social media has always been a cesspit. Instagram in particular has consistently shown that it's all about manufactured image, but this is a couple steps further because we're not talking about people using filters to touch up their own appearance or special photo shoots where the conditions are non-representative of an average person. We're talking about fragments of human content being swept up, manipulated, then regurgitated to millions of people, far greater than that piece of content ever originally reached by itself, and this problem is not being stopped. As it stands, as soon as you find a thread to tug on, the problem is already pervasive. I focused on a few individual examples, but I could show you thousands more. And you can easily find networks far larger than the one that I discussed already today, which may or may not be managed by the same person, but certainly use similar tactics. Each of the profiles I already gave as examples have a beacons.ai link in their profile, which is basically a Patreon alternative, meaning that they not only propagate this stolen content to Instagram, they monetize it through alternative platforms as well. I can understand the argument that AI generated content is fine, despite that content being trained on actual human work in the first place, but this goes far beyond that in a very decisive way. Compounding the issue is the fact that Instagram only allows the rights holder of content to report that same material for copyright infringement, which 
used to be fine in order to prevent trolling. It's an antiquated system now. But with second generation AI influencers, the problem is going parabolic. It's often difficult to even find the original content, let alone the legal representative who owns it. And because you can't report something on someone else's behalf, unless you are that legal representative, no matter how obvious it is, and it is getting pretty obvious, the problem currently has no solution. The pace at which copyright holders will find out about this is insignificant compared to the accelerating pace of the problem itself. And it's a feedback loop because the algorithm very likely chooses and promotes this type of content in the first place. Now that people have identified a cheap, efficient, and effective way of producing it at scale, which they can with even just a simple laptop or even a phone, what do we think is going to happen to the platform? Short term, Instagram at least grapples with the prospect of massively increased engagement and overall content being posted to their website. Long term, the human component of Instagram, and probably soon after social media in general, continues to degrade because the desire to produce revenue and the ability to manipulate content you don't own is increasing faster than any countermeasure. In the end, it's not a problem that currently affects me because I don't have an Instagram or Facebook account to begin with. After I ran an experiment creating a fake profile for researching bot networks, I got permabanned on every single meta-owned platform, but I do use social media and I do understand that problems today could very well affect me tomorrow. And that's what I see happening here, which is the rise of a problem that will continue to grow until it's addressed at the level of terms and conditions, which is currently failing to happen on practically any major website, including YouTube. For the moment, there's not much I or anyone else can do because the issue isn't even technically reportable. I don't own the copyright, so I would have to individually hunt down the women in each of these reels and tell them personally about it, but that's obviously an untenable solution. So maybe awareness, generally speaking, can cause these tech companies to proactively wake up, mitigating something that's about to hit them like a freight train before it actually does, but I'm doubtful, to say the very least. It's worth a shot, but I don't think they're going to do anything before it's too late to have lasting repercussions on the whole ecosystem. That's it. The human component of social media is on track to be drowned out by a tsunami of manipulated garbage well and truly beyond anything we've seen prior to this. And the beachhead is Instagram. That's the thing you'll watch to see what's going to happen in the future to all the rest of them. I guess we'll see what happens over time. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. A special VPN deal, the video sponsor, Incogni, of course, Locals and Patreon, a human Locals and Patreon page. Check that out and more merchandise, new website, etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, question everything, and have a nice night.